Hello all, I wanted to take some time and show you guys how to play what some people call Solitaro. It's basically a version of Solitaire using a tarot deck. It's based off of a type of Solitaire called the Four Aces or Aces Up, I've heard it called also. We're going to modify it slightly for it to be used in tarot because the traditional version uh, goes by the four suits and a pack of playing cards. But in this case, we have the four suits of the minors and then the majors count as the fifth suit. And so that's how we adapt it to make it usable with the tarot deck. Now, this is great just as a game. If you just want to play a game with your tarot cards, some people are not down with that. They are strictly a spiritual tool and that is okay. But if you would like to play a game with your cards, this is one you can play. Even if you're more of the tarot is a spiritual tool only mindset, if you get a new deck or if you're having trouble connecting with a deck, this could be used as an exercise to help you get to know a deck, to connect with a deck, to better get into the symbolism and artwork on the deck because you have to look at the cards and pay attention to the cards as you're playing this game. So it can be a great thing when you get a brand new deck to get to know the deck. And actually, I just got this deck the other day and I've been playing Solitaire with it pretty much non-stop since I got it and I have to say like there's a lot of details in that I've noticed about this deck in doing that so I think it's really helping me to connect with this deck now I have already shuffled the cards and it's going to be a little hard for me to play Solitaire for you guys because I'm doing it upside down so that you guys have the best view of the cards which is going to make it a little bit harder for me oops uh, to play the game, but we are going to soldier through. It just might take me an extra minute or so to see what is there because I'm doing this upside down. So we have, what you're looking for is anything that you have a duplicate, more, two or more of that same suit. And remember majors are their own suit. So we have two majors here. And what you're doing is you're always taking the higher major and you're discarding it. So we're gonna discard that over here. And then we only have that major left. Now we've got two wands. We've got the three and the five. So we're gonna discard that one. Now you are always dealing five cards when you do around when you deal in this game. So we will place these ones on top of the existing cards and then place one card in the empty slots, if you will. Now, I really like to play this with a deck that has all the titles down here at the bottom because then when you have and you will have decks or piles that have multiple cards in it, you can see what's below so that when you're moving things around, if you have a choice of order to do things in, you can choose what order works best to do it in. But that's a little, uh, it takes up a little bit of room. I'm not sure if I can keep it like that and keep myself uh, focused on which card is which, but we will try. So we've got two wands in this layout. We've got the seven and the 10. So we're going to discard that 10. And then we've got two cups. The king is higher. So we will discard that king. And then that leaves us with a cup, a wand, a sword, and a major. So now what we want to do, since we have an empty slot here, we want to move one of these cards over to that empty slot. So Let's look at what we have below. So that has a wand below it. If we move this technically over here, then we can go ahead and discard that wand, which then means we can also move this cup over here, which reveals this sword, which means we can take this sword and discard it. Let me double check and make sure that yes, upside down, I am viewing that right. 
and that leaves us with this. The goal of this is to be left with nothing, nothing but the ace of each suit. And for the majors, that is technically the full. That is our ace for the majors because we're going in sequential numerical order. So we want the ace of each of the four minors and then the full to be our bottom cards. That, oh, look, that landed right there in an open space. So that works out. At least for now, it works out. Okay, so this is actually quite a challenging game. We've got two majors here. The world is the higher of the majors, so we'll discard it. We've got the ace of wands there, so we can discard that wand. Now that gives us two majors and the wheel of fortune is the higher so we will discard it we've now got the two different swords cards so we can discard this one and move that one over there so now we're down to one of each suit we don't have any moves we can make so we'll deal out another round this game is really it, it's a little bit of skill with sometimes how you move around the cards but this is mostly luck of the draw and I will tell you that I've only won if you will probably one or two rounds in the whole time that I have played we can get rid of this cup and then we've got the king of wands we can get rid of him and then we've got these two we can get rid of him so now we've got these aces and this empress we really want to get one of these aces over here so let's see what we can do. If we move this one, the ace of coins over here, that will give us this wand. We can now get rid of that wand, which means we can move the ace of cups over here. So now we've got three of our five aces down. That's good, but that doesn't mean we're going to necessarily succeed in this game. I have played enough of it to know that. We're going to go ahead and lay down our next round. All right, so we've got a couple of majors. So we've got the eight and the 12. So this one will go. Now we can get rid of this. We are stuck with that. And this is a major, so we can't get rid of that page of swords either. So we'll lay down our next round. This does take a bit of time to play. Okay, so we don't have any other swords. We do have these two uh, coins, so we'll take this one. It's the higher. And then we've got two majors. This one is the higher, so we'll take it. Uh, we've got coins again. We can get rid of that one, which then gets us rid of that one. Uh, we now have these two majors. We'll get rid of that one. We can now get rid of this sword, which gets rid of this sword, which gives us the Empress, which can go, which gives us the cup, which can go, which means we can move the High Priestess over here. Okay, we're looking good, looking good. I'm gonna do probably one more round for you guys. And then we will see what happens with it. Okay, so we've got the two of coins. We can't do anything about it. Swords and swords, we can do something about that. Now we can get rid of this coin. We can get rid of this sword. Uh, so let's see if we move the full over. Yeah, let's move the full over because then we can get rid of this. We can also get rid of the high priestess and that means we can move the ace over there now even though we do actually have all of our aces down we're still not done because we've got quite a bit of the deck left we've got to continue to play you want to use up at least 75 to 78 of the cards i'll get to that when we get closer to the end but i'm going to go ahead from this point and play out the game and then i'll be back as i get closer to the end to show you how to end the game 
so I have dealt what will either be your last round or the next to last round. So because there's 78 cards and we're using five piles each time, you'll get to a point where you've dealt out five cards and then there will only be three left. Now you can choose to play these or not. I've dealt out the five cards. We're going to go ahead and play out this round. Um, we can get rid of that. We've got the Queen of Wands. We can get rid of her. We can get rid of that. Justice. We can't do anything with at the moment. The Knight of Wands and the Nine of Wands. We can get rid of the Knight. There's the Two of Wands. So we can get rid of this. We can get rid of the Eleven. But we're still stuck with this cup and then we've got these two majors here <clears throat> we would really need to clean off these majors but that's gonna be hard to do because the full is under this cup so what people will do sometimes is if they think that it'll help they'll deal out the last three cards I really don't think it's gonna help let's see what they are we'll just kind of put them up here and see if that would really move anything all right, so we'd have this here. This would just come off of there. So this would stay on top of the Hierophant. The swords would be here. This would be discarded. And so, honestly, what we would wind up with is just that. But that would only give us more points. So we're not going to deal out the last three cards. We're going to stop here. And we're going to count our points. Now, there's different ways you can do this. I count as a point per card. So the minimum amount of points you can have is five and you want the lowest amount of points possible, just the five aces. But we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now here's how I look at this. If you can get five, and I have never in all the time that I have played this gotten just five, that is an absolute win of the game. I consider anything six through 10 to be a sort of second place victory. Uh, if you can get it down to just 10 cards even, I consider that a victory because I have played through this game with a lot of cards left over. So the closer to five, if you get five, you've absolutely won. The closer to five you are, the better. Uh, we got a nine in this game and I consider that sort of a, a second place or darn close. I consider that to be a good game of Solitaire, because like I said, I have seen people or heard of people getting down to just the five. I have never personally been able to do that. And remember that this is just as much the luck of the draw as it is your skill at the game. So if you don't get down to five aces, and I use the term aces loosely because we're counting the full as the ace for the suit of majors. Um, don't beat yourself up about it. Just have fun with it. To me, it's not so much about winning or losing the game or how many points I have at the end. It is about bonding and connecting with the deck and learning the deck and really getting into the artwork because you get a chance to really look at it as you're comparing the cards to see which one has the higher value so you know what you're discarding and what you're keeping and what you're moving around and positioning so that you can make the best moves possible. So. I find this really fun. I like to play it as just a game, but even if I am playing it as just a game, it's an opportunity to connect and bond with the deck. And so I really like this for that. And I hope you enjoy it. And until the next video, bye. Blessings.